Welcome back to Stay Tuned, I'm Tony Angelo, and today we are working on my Aston Martin V12 powered 89 Mustang. This is just one of those what if projects. Uh, one of my buddies said, hey, I have this Aston Martin V12. Are you crazy enough to try to cram this thing into something American and make it go? And we said, absolutely, send it on over. Uh, and here we are, last time we just made engine mounts for it just to see if we could actually physically fit this thing in there. And with a bunch of cutting, grinding, and welding, we got the Aston Martin V12 with a T56 mounted up in the Mustang. And honestly, it fits, it fits pretty good. Uh, the issue is that you know we've really sort of stepped in it now because now we have to make headers for 12 cylinders fit somehow in this engine bay and make their way towards the rear of the car. And it's gonna be involved. I'll call it very to moderately very difficult when we get started. Okay, so the down and dirty version of this would be to take the stock header, which looks halfway decent. It does not fit in our chassis at all. No real chance of that happening. Uh, cut it, section it, try to get it to lay down a little bit. But turns out you get a really good, bad idea. Sometimes companies support it. And that's what happened here with Stainless Headers Manufacturing. These guys are awesome. And they reached out and sent us an insane kit to build beautiful stainless steel headers and full exhaust for the Mustang. And it starts right here with these flanges that they have, which are the same, yes, as a Dortec V6. So they have them for both. It's also a Mazda V6. Um, you just need twice as many if you haven't have a V12 because this engine is heavily inspired by that three liter V6 that Ford used to make or inspired, you know, they stole some parts from it, pistons, valves, you know, the most, most of the design. Anyway, what we're gonna do now is start the very lengthy process of cutting, welding, and fitting beautifully headers that are gonna work with our steering shaft, our brake booster, all that sort of stuff. Zach is gearing up, Getting ready. right? And also one big piece of the puzzle that they sent us out is this killer gas plate that we'll be able to bolt our headers to and run argon gas through the headers so that, you know, they stay uh, fully encased in that inert gas and there will be no sugaring on the inside. It'll weld really nicely. So that's the plan. Turn these eight million tubes into a, a pair of headers. That's just a really long step one. All right, so we have all these merges and collectors and the idea is that they're not gonna sit exactly like this, but it's gonna go three, like three into one, into two, into one. We'll call it, I think it's three into two and one. And then back into an X and then out the back of the car. And stock, with just the stock exhaust setup, this thing made, I think our year, it's like a 99 makes about 420 wheel horsepower, hoping to get that around 450. That's what some of the later engines made with just intake and exhaust modifications. And that will make this Mustang scream. Also, I feel like all this welding is probably gonna make Zach scream. So let's get him started. First things first, they actually made us these little header, you know, flange extensions, trumpets, whatever you wanna call them. And I think step one is just gonna be to weld them all together. I figure if you, if the first one doesn't go great, by the time you get to the 12th one, you're going to be awesome at it. It's true. Yeah. These trumpets will be playing taps by the time I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Boom. Solid. We've got this purge plate that the guys at Stainless Headers Manufacturing made for us with this sweet Stay Tuned logo. And this is going to bolt down and you can move the argon tube to tube. You'll just put a little bit of tape over top of these bad boys and that will keep them filled with argon so Zach can weld, oh, weld on it happily. We've got a dual feed uh, regulator right there and that's gonna allow us to just, you know, waste a million pounds of argon, but make some sweet headers. All right, so we've got one flange bolted up to the purge plate. Zach is gonna start welding all around these little flange extensions. And uh, while he's doing that, we're gonna do a couple things to the chassis to get it ready to make these headers. So if you watched last time, we made these single tube mounts and lots of people were like, that's not strong enough. Really, we knew that too. 
we were just running a little bit short on time. So now each side has this vertical strut that's going to help support the engine and it should be just fine. Uh, don't work for what we need. I'm going to just reassemble them with these bushings in there. And before I install these engine mounts back in the car, we're going to take advantage of some of the room that we've got on the driver's side to install a solid steering shaft from LMR and the manual brake conversion plate that's going to allow us to just mount our master cylinder right up the firewall. This comes right off the K member. This bolts in. The Ford piece actually bolts into these three as well and just has a large sheet metal piece that comes out and picks up the factory mount, so we know it should be plenty strong. Did I do it? There, done. Just 40,000 more feet to go. Well, then we'll be there. Cool. Oh, hey guys, merch update. We have the Stay Tuned Crewnecks back in stock. And this time we have blue crewnecks and blacks so for the first time ever. This is the down and dirty East Coast Speed logo. And last time these sold out super fast. So if you want one, grab them now and we appreciate it. All right, Zimmy's over there welding those trumpets on. And we're gonna do a couple more things to get a little bit more room in this very packed engine bay of our Fox body Mustang. One of the things is we're installing this LMR solid steering shaft. It gets rid of a much larger rag joint here and a much sloppier rag joint. As you can see, this has zero play for a little bit better road feel and more direct steering. And we've already pulled the brake booster out of this thing because we knew it would never fit. And LMR makes this swanky little plate that's gonna allow me to just bolt it right to the firewall and then bolt my master cylinder right up to it, thereby converting this thing to manual brakes. Let's do it. I said thereby, so naturally it's a British fancy is wearing off on me here. And of course, we don't lick the teaspoon. So I'm gonna pull it right at the rack and right here in this top side of this shaft. and It'll pop right out of there. Just that easy. This is this end's not bad, but obviously this is built-in slop, so we're gonna get rid of that rag joint. It's gonna go All right, we need this steering shaft in for making the headers, um, but before final installation, I will pull all of those set screws and lock nuts out and Loctite every each and every one of them make sure they stay tight anytime you use one of these universal style D shaft Type steering shafts you gotta you gotta lock tight them at a minimum I really like to go in between the holes where the set screws go do a little divot with like an eighth inch or so Drill bit just to give the set screw a place to sort of nestle into lock tight it then lock tight the nut and then I feel confident about it because it's your steering shaft. You want it to stay on there. And that's probably good enough. I'll slide it down a little bit. But that's at least a good representation of where it's going to sit so we know where we can fit headers, header tubes, and where we can't. I'm going to now get these engine mounts into place. All right, I've got the steering shaft in. We'll deal with the brakes later. It's out of the way for header construction. We don't need it. I'm gonna to toss in these reinforced motor mounts and then we'll be ready to just keep on chugging with these headers and start really fitting pipes. I think Zach is still welding away on those trumpets there, but soon enough we'll be able to start putting some bends in and making our way to the back. All right, so Zimmy has the flanges welded up to these little trumpets, these little flange extensions, these little starts of the primary tube. Uh, they look fantastic and we can now fit these to the engine and start working our way back. And like we said, the way it's going to go is we're now going to weld up one and five ace primary tubes that will all go to first stage collectors and then into a second stage. So it'll be on each side of the engine there will be two of these. So we're going to now fit three tubes into three slip tubes. Everything is slip fit, which is going to make this a little bit easier on us because we are not header making experts. And then from here, two tubes will go into one tube and out the back of the car. Sounds easy. 
when you see that Mustang and where this V12 fits in it, it's not. Well, let's get started. So we're just trying to figure out, again, uh, we've got to go six into two into one. Um, so it's like three into one into two a lot into, into one. So it's gonna look like this. If you come in here, we try to put, the, we have two collectors that are three into one. Uh, if we put them both on the back side here of that engine mount tube, then we're trying to fit these three here, but then you're gonna have this other tube that's gonna have to scoot out of the way and run, you know, back here. So I think ideally we're gonna just sort of make make them all separate. This is gonna look like four, three into one headers is the move. This Come goes back. into here. This yep. goes into there. That one goes into the bottom one. You'd actually have to run, because of the radius, you're gonna wanna run this one out and then you'd bring this one back around and in. You good? So we're just gonna start rocking. We have decided to run them both on the back side of that engine mount tube. So now we got the first one in there. We'll bring this collector in and make a little bit of an arc tube coming down to this. Tack that in place, hang the collector in place, and then we can build this primary and this primary from there. There's plenty of room for the second one over here. It's gonna come all the way down back here. But once we get this in place, we should be in good shape. Yep, that's a nice one. All right, so these guys laid in this first pipe. I guess this is number, cylinder number one. Uh, and they kind of married us to the idea that this, is, this collector is gonna sit on the backside, which I think is cool, but you really have to think of all three pipes at once. And they all kind of come into the same plane, so it's really good to get them out of the way so that you have enough space to kind of bring them all together. Because, you know, well, we're trying to do that now. We're actually gonna make what we think is the hardest pipe, the this third one in line here, and then we'll work that second one in afterwards. But more or less, it's just about making sure this really, the, the most hard to fit one has the space, and then we'll go back and do the other one outside of it. But I think we got something rocking here. Before it goes dark this time, it'd be sick. I'm looking at it, it's okay, right? Yeah. And how much does this go on? All right, so we are set up over here now with this flange in the vise. There is nothing in the way of these tubes. We've kind of doped out exactly where they have to go, and it's obviously a lot easier to just build it here. So we're going to, we have everything marked up. The collector is in place. I line this one up with the other collector in the car, and we can build these two tubes. Just tack them in, fit it in, make sure we're good, and go to the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one. Prove it. Next one. Where's the sway bar go? We have finished fitting up all of the primary tubes on the passenger side of the car. Zimmy welded all these up. They look killer. Uh, while this thing is cooling off, we're going to bolt the flanges onto the driver's side and start fitting those tubes up and see if we can uh, make the more difficult side happen now. So let's get after it. You did a great job, bud. It's all right. 
Okay, so Zach and Barb have finished up the first header. It's looking insane, and we're just about to get started on that driver's side. We have to talk about something, though. I think this car needs a name. Really wild idea cars, I feel like, should have a cool name. If, it, if you don't have to force it too much. If it fits, like the Fishtail Cuda, which was a drifting fishtail, Barracuda is a fish, 10 out of 10 name, or like, you know, Finnegan's Blasphemy, where it's like a 55 that's kind of sacrilegious because it's got a Hemi motor in it, and you spell it Blasphemy. Incredibly genius. I love those. So, this is where we're at with this one, okay? A lot of people like, came up with names. First three were this that I didn't like. Let's start with the ones we don't like. First three I don't love, Trashton Martin, Astang, and Rustin Martin. Those, we've got to show some respect for this project. We're working our butts off on this one to make it pretty radical. I think we're gonna go, we're gonna go high end, cool. Okay, the two I think that are really great, um, Nightmare, K-N-I-G-H-T, like a British knight, M-A-R-E, like a horse, Nightmare. It'll just sound like Nightmare when you say it, but see it on the back of the car would be pretty slick. AMFM, Aston Martin Ford Mustang, I think that's cool. I don't know if anyone under 40 is gonna even know what that means back when there was like broadcast radio. Uh, I don't think that one hits quite as hard, so. And then mine was Blaston Martin, I came up with that one. I like it, I think it's fun. It rhymes with Aston Martin, it's a good one. Uh, let me know what you think or if you have something better and we'll keep on chugging. We don't have to dial it in just yet, but it's fun to think about while you're cutting and grinding 55 tubes. A whole new day here. Me and Barb are gonna keep knocking on the driver's side header. First thing I'm gonna do is pull these little trumpets back. I'm gonna trim about three quarters of an inch off. This gives us a little bit more room. The steering shaft on this side is obviously right in the way, so we have to go around it, and we need as much flexibility in the engine bay as possible, so this will give us a little more room to make some bends. Chop these suckers up, start fitting some tubes. That one's flat. Hey! That one's flat. That one's not so flat. That's okay. That's what welding wire is for. Yeah. That's why they sent us all that filler rod. Yeah. They knew. This is going to come here. Mm hmm. And then we'll cut this and then bring it. Yep. Bring it in towards this thing. Mm hmm. Something like that. But it's uh -huh. not to cut in yep. and then scoot around. That's easy enough. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so the passenger side is always the easier side in left-hand drive vehicle or in, you know, any car because the yeah. passenger doesn't steer the car. Driver's got the steering shaft that comes through. We got the smaller one from LMR mm -hmm. and uh, it definitely helped with clearance, but it still you know, has to be managed. We're gonna go three uh, cylinders. The primaries are gonna come on the outside here of the steering shaft and three will go on the inside. So it's really just about managing our space effectively. And believe it or not, having this directly under three cylinders is not as easy for fitment wise as it is having it behind. That way you have room for bends to, to get in here. So we're gonna push it back and angle it up a little bit just to get as much room for those bends as we can. You know, you think like, oh, stick them here, but that's not how it goes. I'm gonna be behind it. So mm -hmm. you have actual room to make those bends. Let's get the tubes in. Which one do you wanna make first? The hardest one or the easiest one? I tell you, there's uh, a lot about a man, the answer he gives. I mean, we did the easier side first, what does that tell you? Yeah. We want to get good at the easy side, which brings your skill level up for the harder side. Yeah, That's like how my brain worked. Okay. Okay. Not yeah. the answer that you That's thought that take. you were... I yeah. like it, I like it. Yeah, yeah. This way? Yeah, in, that'll get you in. That might be money. That looks good. I like it. Okay. Get away with that. Appreciate you want to tag it up? Way. Can you turn a little bit more into the motor? Yeah. I like that better. That's I better. do so. That's the move. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Flat. Yep. 
Idiot. It's much better. Yes. Right, hit that. Good. Perfect. Okay. Good enough. Yeah. Moving on down the line. Gotta weld this one. Yeah, I forgot about that. Okay. Did I get it? Yeah. Okay. I got the collector. Yep, there you go. I think it's fine. That's great. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay. All right, lunch is here. We're going with a half pepperoni pie. Looks delicious. Nice crunch on it. Good cook. Look at that. Good stuff. That'll be my piece. Um, people have asked before, and we have a donate us some pizza button if you want to. No pressure, but we appreciate it when you do. We got a couple good ones this week. Uh, Michael Haas, thank you very much. Kevin Simmons and the rock band Positive Chaos. We stream some of your jams, pretty rocking stuff. We're, we're into it and we appreciate the pizza. Uh, like I said before, we are a pizza team with a racing problem. And uh, it's time to dig in. Oh, boneless? What are we, little kids? That's fine. That's okay. Chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets Those are just bud. chicken nuggets with mm. hot sauce. Mm, there you go. Good? There you go. <laughs> All right. Mm hmm. That's it. Might be. Did you squint at it? I, I did what I could. All right, hang. Let me hold this up for you. Oh, let me get this. It's got to go in. Oh, yeah, that is the thing. Okay. How's that on the other side? It's very good. Hold on. Yeah? Oh, yeah, that is really good. Yeah. Okay. You want to mark them? That's perfect. That's... I told you, man. You got to squint, dude. You got to really eyeball it. Don't measure anything, but like, make sure you're on level ground. And okay. squint at it, right? Just right. Go ahead and mark them. Got it. Got your overalls ready. You're strapped at all times. Keep this sucker on me. How is this gap here? Pretty great. Three yeah. sixteenths at least. Okay. Hold on, I gotta mark it from the side. I, think I can I only hold this tube for so much longer. You're doing great. I'm gonna build all sorts of core strength today. Okay. Good? Yeah. Okay. Hold down. Let's tack them up. Ready? Okay. Good? Yeah. Uh, just kidding. That's uh, bright. There were numerous times where I looked right at it yesterday. It's like you, sometimes you can't help it. Now going? Uh -huh. How's that? Pretty good. How's that fit up there? That's money, baby. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Hit it with that space laser. This looks killer, right. dude. Real, real good. Real good stuff so far. Let's keep rocking. I can, I can cut it across the radius, which makes it ovalized, which we knew was going to happen because we need a tighter bend. It's yep. not the end of the world. We'll use a little bit of hammering and swearing mm -hmm. to get there. Yeah. I think we can live with that. What do you think? There you go. Good. Right hand tack. Oh. Cool. All right. So we need a super tight bend for this last, the 12 out of 12 uh, primary tube. And we're going to just do Japanese JDM style, cutting little 
wedges out, lobster tail style, they call them. What else they call them? Pie cuts. Pie cuts, that's it. We'll call them pizza pie cuts. And we're gonna just, you just take a straight tube and you cut it, a wedge out of it, and it all allows you, if you weld them all together in an incredibly time consuming and boring fashion, uh, you do wind up with a very tight bend. So that's what we're gonna rock with. Hammer it home, baby. Ooh, cool. cool. And it looks pretty sweet too. Yeah. And you know whoever did it has no social life uh, any, of any kind. So we told you before, if you have your collector too far forward, it's gonna be a real pain in the butt to do this. And we did it anyway. Mm -hmm. We sure did. Just to show you guys how, what a pain in the butt it might be. So this collector could be down here and then you'd be able to use your large radius bins and more. I can't help but think in the back of your mind you're blaming this on me. I'm, no, no, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Uh, are we in that? Well, we're close now. We're getting there. That's you one more down one and then down. over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is the last bit of header that we need to make for the V12 Mustang. Barb's got to fit it in. Bump, 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 bump! Look at that. Actually looks great. That looks killer. Uh, we're going to set him loose, welding these primaries up, and uh, keep on rocking. Then we'll move to making the exhaust for this thing, and uh, we'll really have something going on there, which is a fantastic. That looks good. I'm gonna tack it on. Tack it and fit it in the car real quick. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Okay. Cool. All right, we've got the headers done. They are looking incredible. We've got them bolted back in the car, uh, and now Tyler and I are gonna keep on rocking. Bar's getting a haircut. He'll be back later. Looking um, good. What we're gonna do is just, you know, these fit really, really well. You know, Zimmy and Barb did most of the work here, and they good turned job. out killer. Uh, we're gonna come out of here. A couple V bands. And make a welded up one piece X down, you know, mid pipe, uh, hang some mufflers, and then decide if we can swing tailpipes or not. Mustangs have classically radical tailpipes. Yeah. It's just like a two foot section of stainless that lives right underneath the rear quarter panel extension. Classic look. I don't think we have the right size or the right length too for that <laughs> anyway, but let's at least get the mufflers <laughs> in to and go close. from there. Let's put, let's, let's keep going. So, number one, V bands, number two, X pipe. The main motivation for putting this motor in is the sound. V12s sound amazing. Aston V12s especially sound amazing. So we want this thing flowing awesome and sounding nasty. So we're gonna do a is it V band. Sound better than a 302? Better, better than a 302. 302 <laughs> sound good when they're all worked up, but this will be. This will be a be different nice. different sound for sure. It's gonna be different. That's it. So I think number one. It should be relatively straightforward, but because of where this cross member is, to hang a, a V-band hole set up right there, it's going to be tight on space. Well, that one's not bad, but this one is. So we'll trim this back so that it puts the V-band uh, clamp here. So I'm going to just mark it and cut it. It's really got to go back pretty far. So when I need to make a really straight line on a large diameter pipe, I'll use a piece of tape because it will lay across it really square. And then I'll either mark it in the tape or just cut the edge of it. Pretty good cut there. Got a little wonky at the end, I'm gonna flatten it. All right, so that's perfect. So now the clamp and everything is clear of that cross member. That's great. That'll make Barb happy. He likes stuff to be symmetrical. <laughs> I don't that care that much. I just like it to fit good. And you have a little bit of wiggle in the clamp. So I'm gonna take two seconds and make sure it's square running back. Because you have, you can kind of cheat it a little bit this way or that to get a little bit of adjustment out of it. Then I'll tack it on, weld it straight. So stick that in here just so I can square it up. I'm gonna use this straight piece. Kind of get an idea. Get that beam in nice and square. Pretty good. All right, pull it out. Just gonna throw a couple tacks around the flange.
So you want to put your X pipe really close to the end of the headers. Uh, main reason is that you're going to have a drive shaft and a live axle car that's going to move up and down. The closer you can put it to the output of the transmission, the less likely it's going to move up and down into that exhaust. So you can put it up a bit higher. We're obviously going to have this car pretty low, so we're going to try to keep everything really low. So we'll probably put it sort of in this vicinity here. Again, drive shaft droop isn't going to hurt us if we're nice and far forward. So somewhere in that vicinity. You know, that's, this is a proper 45, but it's just going to be figuring out how to cut. If it's there, yeah, I guess could you live could with that. that. Okay. okay, so hold them both. Yeah, that'll do. So what we're going to do is... And just cut the legs right off those things. Oh, okay. Now, get this right. It should be in. <laughs> that looks good to me. All right, cool. Sweet. All right, so we need three grown men to do this because <laughs> there's so many pieces that are moving around. Bruce is going to mark the front pipe, so I'm going to give him a couple tack welds. All right, hit them like that. All right. And then on this side? Yeah, between my fingers. Perfect. All right. Take these out and weld them up. You know, this is a high caliber of work we're doing here, fellas. Not too bad, huh? Yeah, ask them. You know, you gotta yeah, <laughs> we can't be doing like, you know. Put I'm doing my best, dude. Put you guys build those headers, I'm trying to keep up the. No, this is <laughs> X caliber. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay. Well, hump. Level it, get it to the height we want it, and then I'll tack it at the V bands. What's the height you want it? Uh, not hitting the floor is the ideal height. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Of course. Just hold that very end. Okay. Just yep. the very end. I just want to. Just the yeah. tip. Just the tip. <laughs> All right. Kick it down. Kick it down. Your eyes shell it up, so do the best thing. There it is, the cat back, headers back, exhaust is all wrapped up. We did some welding on that, got that all dialed in. The headers are done. I felt like the two big hurdles for this car was getting the motor and trans physically mounted in and making these headers. We have gotten past that and we're gonna be blazing on this project soon. But that is it for this episode of Stay Tuned. Uh, this has been epic, I'm super stoked. Derek comes next week. 
Yeah. Our little Ford 302 is over there. We're going to do a couple of tweaks to it to make sure it is dialed in for my guy and then slap his fair lane together. That is going to be super fun to watch him hit the highway and that thing and just hopefully just smoke tires all the way out of the state. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and we will see you guys next time. It's late. Let's go to bed. Let's go to bed, baby.